Hello everyone and welcome to section 7.4 in which we'll be talking about basis and dimension of a span. All right, our goal for this section is to define the concepts of basis and dimension for any span. Um, just to recap where we stand, in section 7.2 and 7.3, spans of sets of vectors in R3, that's important, we're talking about R3 only, were completely described geometrically. These are either just one vector, the zero vector in a set, that's the smallest it could be. And then if we want something a bit bigger, we could get lines. So a line, um, but that line is not arbitrary, it needs to contain zero, it needs to pass through the origin, it needs to contain the origin. Um, something bigger could be a plane. Again, that plane will be containing the zero vector. And then the other thing it could be is just all of R3, and that's it. Spans are always, in R3, are always one of this, these four things, it cannot be anything else. So what we'll be doing in this section, in this section we will generalize that work to find similar descriptions for spans of sets of vectors in Rn for any n. In particular, we will be learn how to describe the span of a set of vectors in Rn with as few vectors as possible that's going to lead us to basis. All right, so let's start right away. Um, section 7.4.1, basis of a span. Here's a definition of a basis. Let S be a span in Rn. Let B equals V1, V2, Vk be a set of vectors in Rn. We call B a basis for S if both of the following conditions are true. So first condition, we must have that B spans S. So let's spell this out. This means that S is span of B. So S, um, here's B. So we can use linear combinations of these. So I'm allowed to stretch these vectors by a constant and then add them all up. And so if I create all of these linear combination, put them in a set together, that's what S is. All right, first condition, B must span S. Second condition, B is linearly independent. We learned about that recently. This means that the only solution, the only way of expressing the zero vector as a linear combination of these vectors is if you have every single coefficient be zero. There are no other ways. All right, so we need these two conditions. Once we have these con two conditions, we call B a basis. So in this definition, condition one ensures that B has enough generators to construct all of S. So I have enough building blocks to get everything in S constructed. Condition two ensures that B has no redundant vectors, meaning that removing any of the generators would yield a different and smaller span. So I have everything I need to construct S, nothing extra. All right, so let's start with an easy example. So I'm going to look at this set A, so 1, 0, and 0, 1. I want to prove that this is a basis for R2. All right, so I need to show the two conditions. I need to first show that span of A is R2. So let's look at this. If I try to find what the span of A is, I'm going to be looking at linear combination. So A1 times 1, 0, A2 times 0, 1, with A1, A2 in R. And if I actually add it up, I'm going to get A1, A2, A1, A2, and R. That's exactly R2. All right, that wasn't too bad. So I proved that the first condition was true, that S is the span of the set I'm looking at as my candidate for a basis. Second one, I need to show that this set A is linearly independent. That's what it says here. And so I need to look at 
a linear combination like this and show that it would need to have all coefficients be zero. So if I look at a1, let's consider a1, 1, 0, plus a2, 0, 1, that's going to give you 0, 0. I want to know when this is true. If I spell it out, that means that a1, a2, is 0, 0. And the only way that's true is if a1 equals 0 and a2 equals 0. So we do have that all our coefficient must be 0 for this in order for this to be true. And so yes, a is linearly independent. All right, so we have that a spans. We have that a is linearly independent. And so yes, a is a basis. All right. Um, this is not a random basis. It's a pretty nice one. In fact, we can generalize it to any Rn. So if I start the same way, I'm going to start with 1, 1, and then everything else will be 0. Then the next one over will have a 1 in the second spot, but everything else will be 0, and so on. Um, the last one will have a single 1 in the bottom entry. And so this is a basis for Rn. Again, it's not a random basis, it's a pretty nice one. And so this set that I wrote right here is called the standard basis of Rn. All right, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be looking at example 7.4.3, where we'll prove something a bit more complicated. I'm going to take this A, show that A is not a basis, and then find a basis for its span. All right, thank you.